is in line? To, what's going on with Joe Biden? Um, the reports are that Biden is going to be stepping down. This is the type of now. So we've seen this kind of flip flop, right? He gave, he did the debate with Donald Trump. Everybody was alarmed, like suddenly, oh no, Joe Biden's lost his mind. <laughs> like they hadn't seen that in the four years that everybody was saying it. And then there was a bit of a, well, backpedaling, right? Well, I don't know, you know, Joe's fine, Joe's fine. And now that he got COVID and he kind of feebly walks up Air Force One, people are saying, oh my gosh, you know, D Donald Trump, you know, a, a, a bullet can't stop Donald Trump. But COVID stops Biden. We got to get rid of this guy. Here's Van Jones saying exactly that. Watch this. A bullet couldn't stop Trump. A virus just stopped Biden. You've got the nominees of this party getting their butts kissed. Biden's getting his butt kicked by his own party. The Democrats are coming apart. The Republicans are coming together. OK, so um, he's not wrong there. A bullet can't stop Donald Trump. A virus just stopped Biden. So yeah, but Biden's saying he feels fine. Um, here's Joy Reid. She's wondering, why do we have to feel this way? So you got Van Jones on one hand saying, oh, you know, the Re Republicans are rallying together and Democrats are falling apart. And here's Joy Reid saying, why isn't if Joe Biden recovers from COVID? And of course, jo Joy Reid would say this. If you followed her during any of the COVID pandemic, you know that to them, to those at MSNBC, COVID was the Grim Reaper. It was the, the worst thing that could ever happen. And if you caught COVID, somebody gave it to you and they were trying to kill you, basically. So, of course, Joy, Joy Reid would compare Trump surviving an assassination attempt to Biden potentially surviving COVID if and when he does. Watch. Here's the question that I have on that. These two men are both elderly. Donald Trump is an elderly man who for whatever reason, was given nine seconds to take a iconic photo op during an active shooter uh, situation. Weird situation. We'll figure that out one day. Um, but his survival of that and, th and bouncing right back and going right to his convention is being conveyed in the media world as a sign of strength. This uh, uh, current president of the United States is 81 years old and has COVID. Should he be fine in a couple of days? Doesn't that convey exactly the same thing? that he's strong enough, older than Trump, to have gotten something that used to really be fatal to people his age. So if he does fine out of it and comes back and is able to do rallies, isn't that exactly the same? It, it should. I mean, it's not exactly the same. It's not the same incident, <laughs> but it's, all, it's an elderly man it, coming through out of an illness. It should. Right, an elderly man coming through this illness that, you know, we just spent four years demonizing, saying that this was the, the worst thing to ever have. It was the plague. And by the way, Kim Iverson gave it to you because she's a big anti-vaxxer, anti-pandemic, you know, anti-lockdown. It's her fault. It's RFK Jr.'s fault. It's uh, Peter McCullough's fault, Dr. Peter McCullough. It's, you know, I mean, the list goes on on whose fault it was because the, we were, you know, you know how it goes, right? Okay, uh, let's move on with that. So just kind of comical. Well, here is Axios reporting that now it turns out that behind the scenes, behind the curtain, top Democrats now believe Biden is going to exit the race. So what we kind of said yesterday was, oh, Biden got COVID. Okay, maybe he did, but he goes on to Air Force One not wearing a mask. You know, he's, he's seen around his people. They, they clearly don't care about COVID being caught by anybody anymore. Remember when it was like the worst thing? And now they don't seem to care. So maybe this is really just more of an excuse to go and sit and ponder his future and think about how am I going to exit gracefully now that you bastards pushed me out. He could have done this and they could have done this a better way, but they chose to really disgrace him, which, again, I am not a fan of Biden. I don't mind him being disgraced for things that he deservedly should be disgraced for his record in voting the suspicions around his family enriching themselves. There's plenty of things that we could go after Biden for, but it's really telling that in our political climate, they don't go after those things. They instead just go after, he's an old man. I mean, he's about to turn 82 years old. He's lived a long life. He's still doing quite well for 82. I mean, think about the schedule he has as a president running around. So I think he probably is in 482 in pretty good shape, but not good enough shape to run you know, to be president, he's he's clearly slipping a bit on his mind. And, you know, he's just not he can't be president anymore. So now they're saying that these top Democrats are looking to, um, you know, they're, they're starting to whisper into his ear and say, come on, Biden. Some of them include Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer told Biden 
that on Saturday, uh, the day of the assassination attempt on Trump, that it would be best if he dropped out. ABC News then reported that Dems on Capitol Hill want him out and they worry that he's going to lose winnable seats. If not, Nancy Pelosi, a mastermind of the campaign to get Biden out. Wow. So she's the one behind all of this, told him that he could destroy Democrats chances of taking back the House. Uh, Axios was told that she also worried about donations drying up. House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries delivered a similar, if more subtle, message to Biden. Former President Obama has spoken loudly with his silence and his former aides trashing Biden in public. Bill and Hillary Clinton are doing what Obama's doing, so so are their former aides. So they're basically, they're saying nothing and their aides who are surrounding them, having those private inner conversations with them, are out there trashing Biden, making it very clear. Um, They're saying that we also increasingly hear top Biden aides, including ones who initially urged him to fight on after the disastrous debate on June 27th, which was 21 days ago, are saying it's now it's not uh, it's now when not if Biden announces he's not running. So there it is. Um, He's going to be he's going to be resigning. He's going to be stepping down, not not stepping down from president, but. Certainly, he's going to be stepping down as the nominee. And then the powers that be at the Democratic National Convention are going to get together. And these are all the super delegates. So that's the big donors to the Democratic Party. And the big donors are going to decide, not the voters. They've totally ripped democracy. I mean, just the gall of these people. For one, they spent all of eight years now screaming about democracy. Democracy! Democracy! It's, It's under attack. It's under attack. Meanwhile, they've... I mean, they've just ripped democracy away from everybody. They tried ripping democracy away from Trump voters, from Republicans, right? Well, you can't have this guy. We got to block him from the ballots. We got to rip him. You know, we got to put him in jail. We got to do all these things. And remember when they were chattering about, well, if he's if he's um, impeached, was it if he was impeached, which is why they went for it the second time, theoretically, he maybe would be ineligible to run again. That was that was a theory they were trying to run with for a bit. They've done everything they can to rip democracy away from uh, from Republican voters. And now they've just flat out done it to Democratic voters. I mean, they just completely ripped it away. And they'll gaslight those Democrats because they know that the Democrats know that they don't really actually need to vote. Democrats don't really care about voting, it turns out, anymore. Because, the you know, and I say that, I know there's a bunch of you that are watching. I, I still care, Kim. I still care. No, you don't. You don't care. Democrats know you don't care. They know you'll vote blue no matter who, that you believe that there's an existential crisis named Donald Trump facing you down like a, you know, like you've stepped into the lion's den and it's going to eat you if you don't just do exactly as you're told. Listen to me very carefully. Do not make a move. And I mean, don't vote. We will handle it. That is what they've done to their own voters. So they don't care about people at all. Um, now the report is even coming out on CNN. So now you got all these Democratic voters watching CNN and CNN says that Biden is now, they're reporting that Biden is now receptive to stepping down and and is now, (laughs) not only is he receptive to stepping down guys, but he's now asking if Kamala can win. Watch this. Well, Jake, we know as President Biden is flying back to the East Coast tonight after testing positive for COVID, as you said, uh, and cutting his trip to Las Vegas short, we know that he is facing uh, a potentially a new moment in his campaign. He's been hearing uh, for the last several days from Democratic uh, lawmakers, officials and others uh, about their concerns about his path forward here and talking to a senior Democratic advisor tonight. Uh, who is telling me this. He said he believes the president is being, quote, more receptive to these calls of concern. He goes on to say this. The private conversations with the Hill are continuing, this advisor tells me. He's being receptive, not as defiant as he is publicly. Goes on to saying, talking about Vice President Kamala Harris, who initially he wondered how she may fare in a campaign should it come to that. I'm told now he's asking questions saying, do you think Kamala can win? Again, this advisor offers caution saying this. It is still unclear where he's going to land, but he seems to be listening. So, Jake, what would... (laughs) Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's all but certain at this point. And so now the question is, okay, who's going to replace Joe Biden? It's all but certain he's stepping down. We just don't know when exactly. He's going to do it in his own little feeble way. Who's going to replace him? Maybe Kamala Harris. He's asking about that. Well, here is what Mika from Morning Joe has to say is that really our candidate doesn't. The problem isn't our candidate. The focus should be on Donald Trump, she says. So it's it's again that brain rot that that Democrats have, which is 
anything to anybody, any anybody to defeat Donald Trump. We don't need to have policies. We don't have to put forward somebody who's going to like who, who people are going to like, who voters want. We just want to focus on Donald Trump and not on our candidate. Watch. The problem should not be our candidate. The focus should be on Donald Trump. Um, you know, it may or may not be Joe Biden. I trust Joe Biden's abilities. Same. If there is a change, it's got to be a change that gets Barack Obama behind the candidate, Michelle Obama behind the candidate, George W. Bush behind the candidate, uh, former presidents and world leaders and people who understand the importance of democracy, because it's going to take uh, citizens who care about this country to to bring this back together or Trump will win. Trump right now is on the path to winning. Yes, he is. OK, so I mean, I don't know who the Democrats could put forward who's going to actually feasibly defeat Donald Trump. I do have my suspicions of what they might do. They might put somebody in uh, who they, you know, the, who they think is going to be believable enough to defeat Donald Trump. And we're going to go over who we think that might be like in a Democrat's mind. Who do they think has the ability to defeat Donald Trump? And it doesn't have to be by a landslide or even really somebody who truly beats Donald Trump because they'll rig it. They, it just has to be somebody believable so that when they rig it, it's, you know, you can buy that, well, Donald Trump was just so disliked that this person ended up with the, nom with, you know, with who, they, they just, you know, people just really hate Donald Trump. I mean, how could they have voted for a felon, you know, a convicted felon, and somebody who's been impeached twice, and somebody who's um, screwing around with porn stars, you know, all this stuff, right? They're going to pile it on and say, see, see, America just really doesn't like him. So let's go through that list. Let's start off with Kamala Harris, because that's the one that's been mentioned. And she's the current vice president. So she would be the most likely person to step in the shoes of Joe Biden and take the reins and be the nominee. I I have a hard time believing they're actually going to go down this path and actually select Kamala, but I also don't know how they're going to get around not. <laughs> I think they're in a real conundrum with Kamala Harris. How do they not nominate her? She's totally unpopular. In fact, she's more unpopular than Joe Biden. Maybe today she's a, a little bit less, uh, maybe she's not as unliked as Joe Biden today because people are like anybody but the guy who can't even think. I mean, anybody, any thinking person is better than Joe Biden at this point. Maybe that includes Kamala Harris. I don't know. But the thing about Kamala Harris and why she even gained in popularity, now remember she dropped out in the 2020 primaries before the primaries even began. She dropped out of the presidential race. She would gained a lot of moment, momentum. Everybody thought she was doing really well. And then she fell off a cliff. People didn't want her anymore. And uh, they and then and, and actually a little point of interest is that she had received at, at that point in the 2020 primary, she had received all of Hillary Clinton's team. They had actually circled Kamala Harris. She got her top advisors. She got her donors. She got her Rolodex. And she was actually operating with the in the hillary clinton sphere and they were really boosting kamala harris but then when kamala harris fell off a cliff and it was just there was no path to the nomination for her hillary clinton's team circled around pete Buttigieg, and we'll get to him in a little bit here but that is that that's something kind of an interesting point to note but kamala harris being a black indian woman was just too appealing for democrats to not place her in as vice president especially since the reason why she gained momentum was because she stabbed Joe Biden in the debates. If you remember that, she called him, she basically called him a racist, an old white racist. And everybody cheered and Kamala Harris, you know, they painted, they were like, you know, the, the reason why they wanted her and the whole shtick around Kamala Harris was she's a prosecutor. She's going to prosecute Trump. She's going to prosecute that case. I mean, they just went, okay, I don't need a pros. Then, then go become attorney general, right? That Okay, fine. <laughs> Not president of the United States or even vice president of the United States. But that was what they ran on was she's prosecuting this. She's prosecuting that. And everybody wants this prosecutor. Nobody cares. Nobody wants a prosecutor, obviously. What's interesting is I got to show you this because they brought it up again. I thought for sure they had just dropped the whole prosecutor crap. But they, they, you know, I thought, okay, that was just during her candidacy for president, but they kind of got over that. And now look at what they, they just released this statement because um, it says, this is from, uh, about a vice president debate, okay? But the Democrats don't know who their vice president is going to be because 
you know, they, they don't even know who their presidential nominee is. So statement on J.D. Vance refusing to debate Vice President Harris. So they wanted to set up a debate. And it's and this is from the Biden-Harris campaign. It's saying, quote, Donald Trump is the one whose campaign said he would debate anytime, any place, and who picked J.D. Vance specifically for his debating skills. Now, suddenly, right after a damning new leak showing his support for a nationwide abortion ban, Vance is backing off a debate against Vice President Harris, who has spent the last two years prosecuting the case on behalf of reproductive freedom. What? She's been president for vice president for the last two years. She hasn't been prosecuting anything, but that's the way they characterize her. Oh, she's a prosecutor. She's been prosecuting the case on behalf of reproductive freedom. So that, so they're still going with this. This debate has been discussed for two months now. If J.D. Vance is unwilling to defend the Trump Vance record on the debate stage, he should just say so. So then the Trump Vance uh, team, they get back to, to this and they issue this statement. They say Trump campaign response to vice presidential debates. We don't know who the Democratic nominee for vice president is going to be. So we can't lock in a date before their convention. To do so would be unfair to Gavin Newsom, J.B. Pritzker, Gretchen Whitmer, or whoever Kamala Harris picks as her running mate, says Brian Hughes, Trump campaign senior advisor. So the Trump Vance campaign has indicated that they believe Kamala Harris will be the nominee for president, that she will be the one having to debate Donald Trump because she's going to prosecute him on that debate stage. And then whoever she selects, which would be not Gavin Newsom, she can't. Um, legally, you cannot pick somebody from the same state. And remember Kamala Harris prior to being vice president was senator for the state of California. She was also attorney general for the state of California. So she's California. Gavin Newsom's California. They cannot be on the same ticket. They could do a historic ticket that everybody's going to love. They're going to shove it down your throats. It's going to be Kamala Harris and Gretchen Whitmer. Maybe they would do that. But let's go on still to the presidential nominees. There is a possibility, because Kamala is just so unliked, that they throw in Gavin Newsom as the presidential nominee to get rid of Kamala Harris. And not only to get rid of Kamala Harris, but they might be able to make the case that, now oh, this would be a tough one, but they might be able to make the case that Gavin Newsom is just so damn popular, especially with those independents and moderates, that he beats Donald Trump at the ballot box. That's what they could, you know, he's a good looking white male. That's what, they, so in a Democrat's mind, they're thinking that's what Republicans want. They're just looking for a white man and you got Gavin Newsom with his blonde wife and his blonde children, and he's totally against everything Democrats claim they say they stand for, even though he's the governor of the great state of California that has a lot of homelessness and wildfires. But forget all of that. Uh, while he's, uh, you know, bougieing out at the most expensive restaurant in the country at Chinese laundry eat, or French laundry, sorry, uh, eating there while he's uh, telling the rest of us that we can't have Thanksgiving with our families, right? That That's this douchebag. So, would you, you know, I, I live in California. I don't like him. I tried to recall the guy, you know, whole thing. He's just terrible. But Californians love him. Democrats love him. So he's possible, you know, they might, they might put him in there and then they can't select Kamala Harris though as vice president. That might be too much of a slight you know, you got to give her something. She either has to stay the vice president nominee or she's got to be the presidential nominee. I don't know how you get rid of her. And but then again, Democrats could do anything. They'll just sugar it for the Democratic voters and they will buy it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't actually matter. And they know it. Gretchen Whitmer. Let's go to her. Now, this one, I could absolutely see them going with Gretchen Whitmer, the Cruella de Vil. She was the worst governor in the entire country when it came to COVID. If you remember, she was the governor that you could go to Home Depot, right? But they roped off like the paint section and the gardening seeds section. So you weren't, while you're locked down in your home, you weren't allowed to paint your house. So no home improvement. So she locked off all of like the home improvement stuff at Home Depot's and said like only essential stuff that you need like plumbing because you need running water, your toilets to flush, things like that. You could buy those, but you can't buy all of these other things to work on in your own isolated home while you're isolating away from society, she also made it to where people couldn't travel from anywhere in Michigan to their second homes in Michigan. A lot of people have lake houses. And she said, oh, you're not allowed to go to your lake house. You're not allowed to travel in your car where you're locked in a little car by yourself or with your family that you're already locked in with. And you can't travel to your second home where you're going to be locked in your second home. She said, you're not allowed to do that. So she was insane. But what will they do? 
They'll say, well, she was nearly kidnapped by Trump people, even though we now know that there was a bunch of FBI informants that were really behind that. It was like a total setup and kind of looked like a, you know, like a, a, a dry run of January 6th. That's what it kind of looked like. But nonetheless, um, she's a potential selection and she's a woman. She's not a woman of color, but she's still a woman and she's from Michigan. That's where. So maybe, you know, that's where Biden's losing a lot of voters. Maybe she would be one. Let's move on to Michelle Obama. Here's another pick for you. Now, a lot of people are wanting Michelle. They're saying, oh, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle would be the one and then she could defeat Donald Trump. Now, she has repeatedly stated she has no interest in running for office. I believe her. I, I don't think, boy, that would, I mean, look, I don't put anything past the Democrats, but that would be something wild. If they actually like put her, right. I mean, that would be wild, right? But I don't think it's going to be, I don't think, I don't think she's a pick. Now let's talk about Pete Buttigieg. I mentioned mentioned him before. He's the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, current secretary of transportation. Um, he is one that they, 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 the Democratic establishment really rallied behind, which is why he ended up with a cabinet position. Kamala had obviously the vice presidency and Pete Buttigieg got the cabinet. And that's really interesting, isn't it? That the two people who Hillary Clinton threw all of her resources towards during the 2020 primary ended up in cabinet positions in the Biden administration. That's just, you know, that's that's how this game is played. I don't think Pete Buttigieg is the guy. I think there was, you know, if we were to rewind a few years, there was maybe a, a time when the iron was, you know, the strike while the iron's hot for Pete Buttigieg, but those days have passed. He is not popular. Bernie Sanders, let's talk about Bernie. Oh, Bernie, uh, he's very popular with the Democrats and could, you know, if they were smart. Now, I don't, you know, Bernie to me has been like a giant sellout and he, he's gone full on Trump derangement syndrome, full on everything I thought he stood for when he was running for president in 2016. He's pretty much backpedaled on. And I think he has lost a lot of support from voters, but I also think he could maybe rally them back up if he were to be the nominee, but they won't ever give it to him. They robbed him of it twice. They won't give it to him the third time. So he's probably not at RFK Jr. Uh, would they, would they, would they dare? Now, this would also be a very good pick for them if they were smart, but they're not. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. would be, I think, a, um, Look, Democrat voters will vote for anybody they tell them to vote for. I mean, that's they already know this. So they need to pick somebody who's going to go after the independents and the moderates and even the never Trump Republicans. That is RFK Jr. So if they were smart, they would totally, completely, 100 percent say, Bobby, come back, become a Democrat again. We love you. Just kidding about all that other stuff. You know, uh, sorry, we were just rallying around Joe. So come back to the party and embrace it. We are Kennedy Democrats after all and be the nominee. If they did that, they would actually have a shot at winning because I get it. There's a lot of those, you know, mask wearing, um, quintuple uh, dosed up Democrats, but they will vote for whoever the Democrats tell them to vote for. They will. And that includes RFK Jr., now let's go to some that are more fringe that people aren't really talking about much. But this one was mentioned in the Trump uh, Vance uh, letter back to the Kamala Harris, you know, the vice president debate thing, J.B. Pritzker. So this is the governor of Illinois. Um, there is a possibility they go with somebody like this. He's a white man, you know, kind of looks Trumpian, you know, kind of got the red tie big guy, right? But um, his handling of the state's economy of Illinois has been criticized for favoring the wealthy. And, you know, so there's J.B. Pritzker. I, I don't think he's a household name, but he's still somebody that they might they might throw out there thinking that this is the type of character who could defeat Donald Trump. Josh Shapiro. This is the, the attorney general for Pennsylvania. Not a likely choice being a Pennsylvania attorney general, but uh, possible. You never know. I mean, he's. Um, you know, it's possible. It's possible. But this one, I think, is the most of the kind of unknown. I think this is the most plausible. And it was it's Andy Bashir. So this is the governor of Kentucky. I think there is a strong possibility they go with this guy. Um, I think they could do it. They would pull they it's, this is somebody whose name is not being thrown out there at all. And I really would not be shocked if they went with this guy. I think they think this guy, now he, who is this guy? He is the governor of Kentucky. He's a Democrat running the state of Kentucky. 
So right there, they're thinking, all right, Republicans voted for this guy. Why did Republicans vote for him? You know, he's seen as having a bipartisan approach. He's in a very deeply red state, but he's been able to still gain uh, some inroads with those Republican voters and, and look at him. You know, he's a young guy. He's in his 40s. He's good looking. He's white. So they're thinking this will appeal to all of those people who really don't like Donald Trump, but they would vote for a governor of Kentucky. I'm going to put my money on Andy Bashir. I think this guy of everybody on the list has surprisingly the most likely chance of, besides that's, but, but, you know, I, I say that because if it were me and I were in charge and I got to be the person in the smoky cigar lounge with my whiskey, just waving my magic wand and selecting the nominee and not caring about voters at all, like what Democrats do out of everybody on this list, I would, besides RFK Jr. I do think that he would be the smartest selection for Democrats, but, um, so I take that back. I should say, if it were me, I would probably put RFK Jr. or Bernie Sanders. Those are the two highest profile who've made more roads inside of the Democratic Party. I, I would even maybe go with Bernie Sanders. But Andy Bashir, I think, is probably, you know, if you're going to make another, if you don't want to go with any, any of those people that you think are too fringe, Andy Bashir would be your guy. He would totally be your guy. You wouldn't be able to say, you know, he doesn't have the faults of Gavin Newsom running California um he's coming from a red state so i wouldn't you know so i i we're gonna see how this plays out i don't have i don't have um i don't have a feeling yet on any which one of these is going to be it i uh, the most likely would be kamala harris i just can't see them working them their way around their own rhetoric of we've got to support women and minorities and you know all of that rhetoric so i don't know how they get around that without Kamala Harris being the actual, you know, them just saying, all right, Kamala, now who's going to be your vice president? Maybe she picks Andy Bashir as her vice president. And maybe it's the Harris Bashir ticket. I don't know. Be interesting to see. We will find out. It's the POTUS uh, pop and swap. We're going to be watching every day this POTUS pop and swap and how this all plays out. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this clip from the full Kim Iverson show. That's right, this is just a clip. If you want the full show, you can go to kimiversonshow.com and you can watch Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern for about one hour. It's totally free. Check it out, kimiversonshow.com. Thanks for watching.